Lepo pozdravljeni in dobrodošli na festivalu znanosti Nova Gorica 2019 in na znanstvenem šovu Čudovita voda. Dovolite mi, da se vam najprej predstavim. Moje ime je Renata Dacinger in sem znanstvena novinarka, kar pomeni, da se poklicno ukvarjam z znanostjo. Zasebno pa sem prepričana sem tako kot vi velika ljubiteljica znanosti. In naj še posebej pozdravim mestne svetnike, ki so danes z nami, predstavnike krevnih skupnosti ter direktorje in predstavnike javnih zavodov. Jaz sem vam želela čisto potiho priznati, da sem prvič na festivalu pri vas. Zdaj ste mu zvočena, to ni bilo mogoče narediti potiho. Sem pa presenečena in zelo nadušena, da je ta festival že tradicionalna prireditev in da je v Novi Gorici že sedmič. Pripravlja pa ga ekipa Mladinskega centra Nova Gorica in e-hiše Novogoriške hiše poskusov. In za začetek bi v imenu delavne in ustvarjalne ekipe na oder povabila direktorico Mladinskega centra in e-hiše Novogoriške hiše poskusov, gospo Laro Brun. In za začetek danes bomo ploskali pri poskusih en aplavz. Dobar večer. Dobar večer. Pa da jaz kar predstavim našo Renato. Renata Dacinger je res novinarka, predana znanosti in letos je dobila prav posebno prestižno nagrado. Postala je namreč Evropska znanstvena novinarka leta. Tako da jim velik aplavz. Hvala lepa. Na televiziji pa jo tudi vidite, kaj ti vodi oddajo v griznimo znanost. Tako da otroci lahko si pregledate stare posnetke in tudi... Pa tudi odrasli. Tudi odrasli. Zdaj bi pa jaz tebe predstavila. Na odru se bova tikali, ker se tikava tudi zasebno. In sicer si diplomirana matematičarka, si ekonomistka, sodelovci tekličejo tabelca, to mi je zelo šeč, mogoče te bom tudi jaz klicala tako, in kar 12 let si trenirala atletiko. To pomeni, če bi te jaz dele nekako morala upisati v treh besedah, bi rekla znanost, finance in nekako strajnost. To so pa v enem tudi besede in nekako predelniki, lastnosti, ki so verjetno zelo potrebni, da vodiš e-hišo, kako si se znašla v znanosti, kako se znajdeš v znanosti, zakaj ti je to všeč? Res mi je bolj všeč matematika kot pa poezija, ampak zdi se mi zelo pomembno, da se vlaga veliko truda in časa v znanost in prav veseli bi bili, da če se kdo od današnjih obiskovalcev odloči za znanost in postane znanstvenik, bo tudi naše poslanstvo doseženo, tako da zelo vesela bi bila, da nekdo od obiskovalcev bo nekdaj tudi znanstvenik. To verjetno leti bolj na otroke. Otroci, se boste odločili, da boste znanstveniki, pridite nazaj in povejte to e-hiši. Na vas je tudi ona navdušila za to. Bi ste mogoče malo poigrali številkami. To je že sedmi festival znanosti. Koliko dogodko bo? Letos smo festival razdelili kar na tri prizorišča. Na enem smo sedaj tukaj. Danes se je dogajalo kar sedem predstav o čudoviti vodi. Povabili smo znanstveni centr iz Estonije, aha, tudi jutri bomo seveda vabili, da pridejo nas pogledati ob desetih, enajstih in povdne, nekaj mest je še prostih. Drugo prizorišče je bilo namenjeno kar sedem predavan o prvemu pristanku na Luni, ter o srednji del, ki je bil namenjen predstavitvi naše ehiše, ter tudi sodelovanju z Jožev Štefanom iz Ljubljane, in projektom My Machine so se predstavili dijaki šolskega centra tukaj iz Nove Gorice. Leto znanost obeležuje 150. obletnico najpomembnejšega kemijskega pripomočka, to je periodni sistem, o tem bomo mogoče malo izvedeli pozdneje, pa 50. obletnico pristanka na Luni, za katerega se verjetno vsi strinjamo, da je eden največjih dosežkov znanosti in človeštva. Zdaj ste si izbrali ravno ta dogodek, Kaj vse ste povedali v Luni? Kaj vse še boste povedali v Luni? Zelo pomembno se mi zdi, da obeležujemo take obletnice in če se navežem najprej na periodni sistem, tudi periodni sistem je tabelca. In tudi jaz sem tam umeščena, namreč 
Pogledala sem ga in moje ime je sestavljeno iz dveh zlogov, la in ra. La, lantan, ra, radi, tako da... Pa primek, br, brom, u, uran, n. No, la, ra, brum, tako da dejte tudi vi, mogoče sestaviti vaše ime in primek s temi elementi. Kar se tiče pa predavanja o luni, seveda sedem predavanj, totalno zapolnjenih, Spoznali so lunine sonde, skafander, luna je bila v premeru treh metrov kar, tako da so si res otroci in mladina predstavljali, kakšna je pravzaprav luna, seveda o odpravi na luno in kaj nam bo sploh pomenilo to, da bomo lahko tudi sami en dan odpotovali na luno, tam živeli in pogledali planete tudi z drugega zornega kota. Ti pa gledaš daleč v naprej. Po zvezdi je blizu. Koliko obiskovalcev pričakujete, če se še nekoliko poigrava številkami, še enkrat naj pa vdarim vsi dogod, ki so brezplačni, potrebno pa se je na nje prijaviti na spletni strani oziroma prijaviti za vstopnico. Koliko obiskovalcev bo? Zelo sem vesela, da vidim, da žari v ljudeh ta želja po znanost in odkrivanju nekaj novega. Tako da se letos lahko res pohvalimo številko do ene urce nazaj. Je bilo kar 3200 kart oddanih, kar mislim, da je res en velik, velik presežek. To je odlična številka, mogoče en lep razlog za aplavz. Hvala. Nekaj mest je še prostih, zato se še lahko prijavite na jutrišnje dogodke. Pa še malo številkami. E hiša in se razprostira na 172 kvadratnih metrih, v njih je več kot 30 poskusov. Imaš mogoče kakšnega najljubšega? Imam in to je poskus o ustrajnostnem momentu. Zakaj se mi zdi ta poskus zelo pomemben? Seveda imamo dva diska, enaka diska z drugače razporejeno maso na obodu, spustimo jih po klančini in čakamo, kdo bo zmagal, kateri bo zmagal. In seveda disk z večjo ustrajnostnim momentom zmaga. Kaj je pri tem pomembno, da otrokom povemo, da disk ima večjo ustrajnost, ga je težje zagnati, vendar ko dobi to ustrajnost, ga je tudi težje ustaviti. Tako da je pomembno v življenju ustrajati in to bi prinesli tudi radi na otroke. Ravno tako tudi z našo je hišo. Omeljna si 172 kvadratov, začeli smo na mostovni, skromno, potem se preselili v sam centr mesta, kjer zdaj je hiša tudi domuje in seveda so na tej prostori malo pretesni, tako da bi se želeli nekaj večji prostorov. Zatem za ustrajnostjo tvojo in je hiše sem prepričana, da vam bo uspelo, pa še mogoče s pomočjo koga iz publike. Številke so tudi finance, kako zahtevna je organizacija takega projekta? Za tako majhno ekipo, kot jo imam Mladinski centr, namreč poleg mene je tudi pet mojih zaposlenih, ter med temi petimi dva, ki skrbita za hišo, tako da bi ob tem tudi se rada njim zahvalila, ker kadar je potrebno delati, je potrebno res trdo delati bi pa se rada zelo, zelo zahvalila mestne občine Nova Gorica, kajti brez te podpore tudi nas ne bi bilo, tako da en velik aplavz prosim tudi za podporo mestne občine. In ker si športnica bila, po duši si še vedno, imaš verjetno tudi načrte za vnaprej, kam želiš popeljati ehišo. Seveda bi si želela, da hiša preraste v znanstveno izobraževalni centr. Taki centri so prisotni tudi po Evropi, ki so stičišče tudi turističnih, kot turistična točka. Tam bi bil kraj povezovanja seveda znanosti, univerze, podjetji, ki se ukvarjajo s tehnološkimi presežki. Tako da v bistvu načrti so velike, so pa načrti tudi za naslednji festival znanosti. Najlepša hvala. Hvala lepa za enkrat. Zdaj pa je čas, da tudi ti sedeš v prvo vrsto in se malo prepustiš v uživanju. Dela je bilo dovolj. Hvala. Še nekdo je nocoj z nami.
še nekdo je nocoj z nami, brez katerega ne bi bilo e hiše novogoriške hiše poskusov. To pa je gospod Luka Manojlovič, ki ga lepo vabim, da se mi pridruži na odru. Ustanovitelj e hiše in mestni svetnik in tudi za njega en velik aplavz. Hvala lepa. Leta 2008 ste ustanovili in financirali e-hišo. Zakaj ste pravzaprav, kako ste pravzaprav prišli na to idejo in zakaj ste pravzaprav naredili ravno to? Zakaj se niste recimo najo kupili enega res dobrega avta ali pa vikend nekje na morju ali po gorah? No, s tem projektom smo začeli že nekoliko prej. Stvari rabijo nek svoj čas, da lahko nastanejo. Lik danes, ko sem vedel, da bomo verjetno tudi teh tem se dotakali, prvi elektronske pošte na temo vzpostavljanja nekega takšnega centra, takrat še na Mostovni, so se zgodili že v vročem poletju 2006. leta. Na to smo pa rabili leto pa pol intenzivnega dela, da smo 8. leta, če se namotim septembra 2008 zadevo takrat otvorili. Kar se pa tiče drugega vprašanja, zato, ker mi pač to, kar vidim danes, pomeni več. To je vaš avto in vaš vikend. Mislim, avto sicer imam, vikenda pa verjetno nikoli ne bom imel. Ta aplavz je bil pol srca, za ta aplavz pa nisem jaz prosila. Leta 2013 ste Ehišo predali v upravljanje Mladinskemu centru. Kako ste zadovoljni s tem, kar je postal vaš otrok? Zdaj tako, prva stvar je, da jaz si ideji vseh, ki sem jih ustvaril in ki jih še ustvarjam, si jih ne prisvajam. Tako da moje ideje, ki so namenjene javnosti, so javno dobro. In meni mi je super, da je ta ideja prerasla, tudi mene takrat, in nisem bil več sposoben je ustrezno servisirati v narekovajih in sem zelo vesel, da jo je prevzela inštitucija, katere smoter je izvajanje tudi takšnih programov. Tako da jaz mislim, da je bila tista odločitev prava. Veseli me tudi, da se je zgodil velik preskok iz pritlične hiše v tronat stropno e-hišo, ki je danes v središču mesta in želel bi si enako kot direktorca, da bi v bodoče še kakšno nadstropje se zgodilo. Spomnim se, da sem leta 2006, 2007, ko smo prostore iskali, bil v enem momentu tudi nekoliko bom rekel, malce jezen, zato ker vsa vrata se niso lih tako enostavno odpirala, kot se zdi. In vem, da sem enkrat tako sam sebi zabrusil, ker sem z enega sestanka šel malo nejevoljen, ker nisem dosegel tistega, kar sem si želel, sem rekel, bo že videla na mesto enega štuka, bo imela tri. In zdaj jih ima tri. Zdaj mi ni treba noben mu nečte žiti in si želim, da bi jih imela vsaj pet. Tako da, Lara, probajmo najdeti eno pet nadstrobno bajto. Imate tudi vi mogoče svoj najljubški poskus v hiši? Ja, tega, ki ga je direktorca omenila, torej ta ustrajenost, to smo takrat, se spomnim, že zelo zgodej naredili, nam je bil zelo zanimiv. Moj priljubljen je pa v bistvu zdo, kar je nam vezana ena anegdota, tale Pitagorov izrek, ki je v bistvu simuliran tako, da se pretaka tekočina v te kvadrate nad katetom in hipotenuzo. Zdaj tega, ker jaz vam iskreno povem, da v sedmem razredu ali v šestem, ne vem, kdaj se učimo o Pitagorovem izreku, jaz pojma nisem imel, kaj hoče meni povedati profesorca. Ja, Pitagora prej, pa profesorca takrat, da vso ta kvadratov, ma kaj pomeni vso ta kvadratov? To mi ni bilo jasno, kako ne tista dva kvadrata se štejem. In s to tekočinom je bilo to zelo zanimivo. Anegdota je pa tale, tako smo šli pripravljati ta eksperiment, ki ga v moji eri nismo pripravili, so ga šele v Mladinskem centru zrihtali. Sem jaz šel v Ajdoščino k enemu gospodu, ki obdeluje plastiko in sem nekaj, da hočem Pitagorov izrek in da mi ga zreže in jaz sem mu povedal mjere. In on je rekel, ni problema, pridite jutri, bo že zrezano. In jaz sem pršil še trije prijatelji, so bili z mano v avtomobilu in grem noter in mi rečem, koliko bo zdaj to zaplačati in on reče, ne vem, govorim na pamet, zdaj deset evrov, so neko, o, ma se zelo poceni, super, in plačam in on mi da tak mičkon, Pitagorov izrek. In potem pridem v avto in se neko fant je milimetri pa centimetri, tistvena razlika. Tako, 
Tako da en tak mičkan kolutek je še vedno nekje v jehiši, verjetno. Zanimiva anekdota, zdaj pa v bistvu najlepša hvala. Vi ste bili danes tukaj kot predstavnik oziroma ustanovitelj jehiše in kot tudi predstavnik občine. Zdaj pa tudi vam želim, da uživate v današnjem šovu. Hvala lepa in hvala lepa vsem svetnicam in svetnikom, predstavnikom krajevnih skupnosti in seveda vam, ki ste željni znanja in radovedni. Ostanite taki še naprej. Hvala. Estonski znanstveni centar AHA ima tam svojo skupino in ti so danes prišli v duhu našega zadnjega sogovornika, ki je nekoč rekel oziroma na svoji spletni strani zapisal, v bili so me v tujino, pa nikoli nobene službe nisem sprejel. Tako pravzaprav mi nismo šli v Estonijo, ampak smo Estonce pripeljali v Novo Gorico. Prihajajo iz znanstvenega centra iz mesta Tartu, Tam je poleg veliko razstavo eksperimentov, tudi vsak dan videti veliko šavo in enega o čudoviti vodi bomo videli tudi danes. Malo sem razmišljala o tem, zakaj je ravno voda. Moje ideje so bile, voda je vir življenja, voda je zelo običajna tekočina, po drugi strani pa zelo nenavadna, ima edina pH 7, a pri stotih stopinjah točno zamrzne pri nič. V bistvu se nam zdi res običajna, po drugi strani pa zelo nenavadna, ampak mogoče je prav, da to, zakaj ravno o vodi, vprašam nocojšnje goste. Please welcome on the stage. Hello. So, why are you showing these experiments with the water? Why water? What does it mean to you? Well, we had actually an option. Which theatre can we choose to perform here? And we've chosen this wondrous water theatre because that maybe is the most important to us. Because water is obviously a thing which we use on an everyday basis in our everyday lives. And, uh, for example, we drink it every day. Some of us swim every day. Obviously, we need to wash things. And what else can be washed with than water? And we're also, well, showering is also a good thing. Torej, vprašanje je, zakaj prav voda. Voda zato, ker je to najpogostejši nekako, najpogostejši osnov tako vsakdanja. Jo pijemo, se umivamo, tuširamo, kuhamo, peremo, pomivamo, poleti plavamo in se zdi, da je nekaj za tako zelo vsakdanjega. Po drugi strani pa je tudi za otroke lahko zelo, zelo zanimiva. Also, from one point, the water is the most common thing. It's like the base of the life. Like astronomers are looking for water on different planets because if there is no water, then there is nothing else to look for, basically. But still, we can make some very unusual things with water, and that's what we're going to do. In ker je voda tako vsakdanja snov, nekaj tako vsakdanjega in normalnega, temelj življenja, odkot je vse izvira, astronomi, ko iščejo življenje na drugih planetih, iščejo najprej vodo. In torej, če je nekaj tako samoumevnega, zakaj ne bi pogledali, kaj lahko naredimo nenavadnega z vodo? In to je to, kar si prizadevamo narediti mi. In tako zdaj gremo na pot spoznavanja vode. And so we'll start... Okay, exploring water. Let's start. So all the things here are ready. We are ready. Trodoci ste pripravljeni, midva so pripravljena, ja, vsi. So we have only one question for you. Are you ready? A ste pripravljeni? Oh. Let's go on three, two, one. Demo še krat, ja. That's much better. That's good. Now that was good. And yeah, so what we know about for water? Kaj pa vemo o vodi? Like... How many different waters can be there, like... Koliko različnih vod poznamo? One. One. Just one. Eno, samo eno vodo. So you mean in the Mediterranean Sea and in your tap, it's the same water? Voda v morju je ista voda kot v pipi? Ne. No, of course not. One is saltier, right? Ena je slana, ne? Druga pa ne. Yes, so water can be changed. For example, chemically, it can be changed by adding salt inside of there. So different properties can be changed. Vodo lahko spreminjamo, ne? Vodo lahko dodamo malo soli, pa je že drugačna, ne? Kemično spreminimo lasnosti, ampak kaj še? But even though we use water in our everyday life, probably we do not know a lot about it. And we're prepared a lot of experiments 
explaining the physical properties and chemical properties to make you know your water better. Inker vodo poznamo v sakdanjem življenju, vemo kakšna je, ampak mi bi radi raziskali njih njene fizikalne in kemijske latnosti. In zato smo pripravili kar eno celo vrsto eksperimentov. So we we'll hope the next 40 to 45 minutes will be fun for you and for us as well. So we can start. Torej upam, da se bomo v naslednjih 45 minutah zabavali, tako vi kot tudi mi. So the first experiment is about something that pretty much everyone has learned. It, it's, it's told to you, to people in primary school, yes, that water can be in three different forms. In prva stvar je, to se učimo že v osnovni šoli, vsi dobro vemo, vodo poznamo v treh različnih stanjih, a ne? There is... In sicer? Tekoče, liquid. Liquid. Aha. Trno, solid. Yes. In? And plinesto, gas. Exactly. So, yeah, I was right. You were told this. Vidim, vidim, da so vas naučili. Dobro. So, the first two experiments will be about turning water from one form to another. In torej prvih nekaj eksperimentov bo, kako pretvarjamo vodo iz enega stanja v drugo. So, for example, we have this jug of water right here. It's definitely in its liquid state. So, how can we change this one to... Ice or solid. So we'll freeze them. Yes. We can freeze it. We can put it in a freezer, wait for like 12 hours or something, Dobro. yes, and then, uh, and then it will be like solid piece of ice here in this jug. Torej se zmenimo. Jo damo zdaj v zmrzovalnik, počakamo enih 12 tur, pa bomo imeli led. Pa bo v redu. No, not good. <laughs> yeah, and also we forgot our freezer at home. Dobro. Na srečo, na srečo sva pozabila zmrzovalnik, tako da ga niva v sabo. But the main reason why we'll not put it in the freezer is because it takes too long, but we do not have all the time in the world. In nimamo toliko časa, pa se ne ne da ta čaka toliko časa, tako da. But still it was a right answer. It was a good option. Just Odgovor. doesn't suit us right now. Odgovor je bil pravilen, sicer zmrzovalnik. Sam mal dolgo je treba čakat, ne? I have another option. We can use some other liquid to make our water turn into ice. Do you yes. have any options of what it could be? Mamo, mamo eno drugo rešitev. Uporabimo lahko eno drugo teče, tekočino, da to vodo hitro spremenimo v led. A kdo ve, kaj bi to bilo? Something w way colder Liquid than the freezer. Liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen. Tekoči yeah. dušik smo slišali, ja? It seems like it's totally common thing in Slovenia, right? Mislim da kaj imate tekoči dušik kar vsi tako doma da kar tako veste, al kaj. Everyone knows oh, about liquid oh. nitrogen. Every, every, every house has a kitchen, every house has a living room, a toilet and liquid nitrogen. Sak obviously. dom tukaj v Sloveniji očitno ima dnevno sobo kuhnjo, stranišče pa tekoči dušik, a? If that's the case then I want to live here, to be fair. In to samo zato ne vem kar ne živim v Sloveniji, ampak dobro. But actually nice you can just make ice cream at home. Ampak to pomeni, da delaš lahko sladoled doma. Hmm. So yeah, we have liquid nitrogen in, in this tank and okay. we will use it to make u... solid water. Tej posodi imamo tekoči dušik in iz tega bomo naredili zdaj vodo v trdnem stanju. So about a quarter of this tank is currently filled with this liquid nitrogen. In torej približno ne četrtino tej posode smo napolnili s tekočim dušikom. So, because our room temperature is much warmer than the temperature of liquid nitrogen, currently it's already turning into this kind of foggy state. In ker je tukaj temperatura veliko višja od našega tekočega dušika, vidimo že izhlapeva in to kar močno. But maybe can anybody tell me the temperature of liquid nitrogen? Ali kdo izmed vas ve, kolikšna je temperatura tega tekočega dušika? You should know it, you have liquid nitrogen at home. We established that. Pa se morate vedeti, če pa imate vsi to doma, no? Minus? Ba 200, je. Aj, absolutno. Minus 200, right. Minus 200 stopin Celzija, ja. Yes, exactly. So, thanks to this, well, we can actually freeze pretty much everything in there. Mislim, s tem pa lahko zamrznamo, kar hočemo tam noter, a ne? For example, we can start putting our hand in there. Recimo, lahko dam roko noter, ne? Please no. Please, ne, ne, please don't do that. Ne, ne, Not, ne. No, 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 no. No. Ne. No. Ne. Well, maybe if Adoni is very scared of me putting my hand in there, let's put something else in there. For Demo, example, this lovely Christmas tree. Demo yeah, let's put something that... eno tako božično drevesce. Yeah, let's put this Christmas tree in this tank. It's a... It's... 
Not so sensitive. Ne, mo ni tako občutljivo je iskovine, pa dajmo to zamrdnet malo. So, I don't know if you see it, but it's ne vem, če tam vidite, boiling right ampak now. Ampak v bistvu vre. Because this metal Christmas tree was like, I don't know, maybe 25 degrees warm, like the temperature of air in the room. Zato, ker je to drevese imelo približno 25 stopin, kolikor je tukaj zdaj noter, in v tako hladnem dušiku začne vret. But still for liquid nitrogen it's quite enough to start boiling. In to je čisto dovolj 25 stopin, da začne noro vret. So now we take this Christmas tree out of liquid nitrogen. Zdaj ga pa tegnemo ven z dušika. For adults, this experiment is known as the Michael Jackson experiment, and that's an inside joke. Those who get it, those get it. Odraslim pravimo, da je to eksperiment Michael Jacksona, kdor je razumu, je razumu. So, nothing changed. Ampak nič se ni spremenilo, ni preveč očitnih spremen. Kje pa imamo led? Je neki se kadi, ampak je led tam? I would like to ask those kids who are sitting right here to breathe on it. Just like this. 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 Like In zaradi tega tudi, da potrebujemo neuradni naziv tega eksperimenta, pa kako kaj? Ej, in veriti, pa lahko tudi rišemo na njih. Right? So now it's gonna smile for a little bit. Nekaj časa se bo se smehljal ta drevček tukaj. So now, as a little off topic, as a safety introduction, please do not get on the stage at any point in time, because we will be working with different dangerous chemicals. I would advise to not. Umesno opozorilo, lahko tukaj sedite, ampak ne se preveč približate odru, ker bomo imeli tudi par nevarnih eksperimentov in da ne bo kaj se zgodilo na robe. Yeah, we came here to have fun. Safety first. Prišli smo se zabavati, da ne bi bilo kaj na robe. Yeah, we came here to have fun, not to get hurt, obviously. So now... So, in this experiment we actually changed the form of water and we turned gaseous water into solid one. In s tem eksperimentom smo spremenili stanje vode. Imeli smo vodo v plinastem stanju in ko ste jo pihnili, ker ste imeli v vdihu nekaj vode na smrečico, je postala v trdnem stanju, je zmrznila takoj. So now, obviously this is not the last experiment which we'll do with liquid nitrogen, This will be the last. In ne bo zagotovo to zadnji eksperiment, ki ga bomo delali z tekočim dušikom. So let's add a little bit more, as I see. Dajmo ga malo več dodat. It's obviously evaporating really fast in a room temperature. Kot vidite, zelo, zelo, zelo hitro izklapeva. And now, what we can do is actually play a little bit with different temperatures. In zdaj se lahko začnemo poigravati z različnimi temperaturami. So the temperature inside of here, as we established, is minus 200 degrees of Celsius. Kot smo že rekli, temperatura v škatli je minus 200 stopin Celsija. So we can mix it with liquid that is of some kind of warm or even hot temperature. Lahko pa tukaj primešamo tekočino, ki je vroča, zelo vroča. And here is the question, here is the next question. How can we change liquid water into gaseous one. In naslednje vprašanje je, kako vodo iz tekočega stanja prenesemo v plinasto? Jo zavremo. We have to boil it. Yes, exactly. And actually, that is the main option. That's what we have done. In to smo tudi naredili. Tukaj imamo... At about 100 degrees, the water starts to boil and evaporate. That's why the temperature right here is about maybe 90 degrees. Voda pri 100 stopinjah začne vred. Tukaj smo jo segreli v čajniku, tako da ima približno kakih 90. But still the difference between those two temperatures in here and in here is about 300 degrees. Ampak še vedno razlika med eno temperaturo in drugo temperaturo je kar skoraj 300 stopin. So let's see what happens if we put this water there. In kaj se bo zgodilo, če to vročo vodo ulijemo v tekoči dušik. So safety first, as we established. Kot smo že rekli, varnost na prvem mestu. Now, 
in the three. DVD. I know I look weird, Two. but... Uh, one. Anna? Take your seats. Bala, Nazai, Demo Nazai. Ike. So the question is. Is de Mamo Prashanye? Please take your seats. Demo Nazai, so sist. Antje? Hey. Kids very much love water in different states, obviously, <laughs> liquid to drink it, and this one as well, as I can see. Nigli Zapit, ne, Ampak? So, the thing that we see here. Tokas de Tuke Vidimo. Yes. It is water, actually. Yeah, they ask for water. But what state is it? Is it gaseous? Is it liquid? Or is it solid? In katerem stanju je? Ajo tekočem, trdnem, plinastem? Plinastem. Gay, gas. So gas. You think it's gaseous, right? Mislite, da je plinasto stanje? Liquid? Have you ever seen any gas? A ste kdaj videli kak plin? For example, think about the air. The Lejde, air is a gas. Zrak je plin. Tukaj vse okoli, to je zrak in je plin. A ga vidimo. And all of the gases which are in this mixture are invisible. Plini so nevidni. As long as we see it, it's not gas. In ko torej nekaj vidimo, zagotovo ni plin. It just cannot be gas. It should be something else. So therefore, uh, definitely it's not a solid, as we can all see. Vidimo, so da ni v trdnem stanju ta voda, to je vse močitno. So we have only one option left. Ostane nam samo ena možnost. And as weird as it is, it is liquid. In vem, da je čudno, ampak to je voda v tekočem stanju. So in physics, all of matter can exist in three forms, solid, liquid and gas. In solids, the molecules, in this case, the water molecules, are very close together. In torej v fiziki so vse snovi vedno v enem od treh stanj, torej tekočem, trdnem ali plinastem. Tukaj so molekule vode, dokaj blizu skupaj, da so skoraj tekoče. So in solids, for example, in ice, they're very, very close together. In liquid, they're a bit far apart, further apart. And in gas, they're very, very far apart. In tako da v trdnem stanju, pri ledu, so molekule vode tako tesno skupaj, da je led trd. Pri tekočem stanju so malo bolj narazen in v plinastem so zelo narazen. So this fog, which we can maybe count as a fourth state, which would not be very scientifically correct, but its molecules are somewhere between liquid and somewhere between gas. In to, kar smo gledali, je nekaj, kar vsi dobro poznamo. To je mgla. In v mgli so molekule vode predvsej blizu skupaj, tako da zgledajo, kot da bi bile v plinastem, ampak spet toliko narazen in vendar toliko blizu, da so bliži v tekočem stanju. Now let's go a little bit further away from states of water and let's talk about the physics behind this mixture. Ampak pejmo še en korak dlje in oglejmo si fiziko, fizikalne lastnosti vode. Fog can also be a bit tricky, right? You can even get lost in fog, right? Ker mgla je malo tako, ne, nevarno. V mgli se človek izgubi, v mgli je težko voziti, ker nič ne vidiš. But can you hide something with just real clear water? Ampak, a lahko kaj skrijemo s bistro vodo? Just hide something. Da nekaj skrijemo v vodo, ki je čista, bistra. Kako skrijemo lahko? Ne. Ja? Ne. Ja? Ja, a sem se jaz skrila zdaj. Ali me vidite? Pa prst se vidi, a ne? I can still see my finger right here. Vidiš, da prst še vedno, torej ga nisem skrila. Kako bomo nekaj skrili v vodo? But still, it's not impossible. Ni nemogoče. So what we have here in this huge bucket is a bucket full of hydrocrystals, as they are called. V tem vedru imamo tako imenovane hidrokristale, ali vodne kroglice. So those were made from a little polymer that when put in water, it just expands, gets, it expands and get, gives us these wonderful crystals with diameter about a centimeter. In imamo te 
kroglice z vode, obdane so z enim polimerom neke vrste plastike, ko damo to v vodo, malo naraste, ampak v bistvu je to voda. So they have the same physical properties as water itself. They're not edible though, but physical properties are the same. In tore fizikalne lastnosti teh kroglic so iste kot lastnosti vode. Niso za jest, ne smemo, ampak po ostalem so pa popovno menake. They're clear. So, prozorne, bistre. So, now we need some help. Rabimo malo pomoči. So, applause to Renate. Applause to Renate. So, I will keep you for a minute longer explaining what we'll do here. In sedaj bomo malo razložili, kaj bomo naredili. So, we'll have three experiments explaining different physics behind water, and the first one will be called the refractive index. In torej, tri eksperimente bomo imeli s fizikalnimi lasnostmi vode, in prvi se bo ukvarjal s tem lomnim koeficijentom, tako mu pravim. Sliši se zelo zapleteno, upam, da bom znala pomagati. It sounds very complicated, I hope I could help. Yes, but uh, how to explain it easier is when the light travels through water and when it travels through air, the light acts differently. In zelo preprosta razlaga je ta. Svetloba, ki nam omogoča, da vidimo, potuje skozi zrak na en način, skozi vodo pa na malo drugačen način. So, for example, maybe you've noticed when you're standing half in the sea, then you can see your legs a little bit smaller than they actually is. In ste opazili, da če stojite nekje do pasu v vodi, Ko pogledaš dol, kar nekrat vidiš, da imaš noge, bistveno krajše, kot so zares, a ne? And that is exactly because the refractive indexes between water and between air are different. Zato, ker je lomni koeficijent med vodo in zrakom drugačen. Svetloba se lomi drugače. So, you're a journalist, right? Yes. Vi ste novinar, ja. And I guess you have a little bit stress for life. Mislim, da imate kar stresno morda življenje, ali ne? But I can handle it. I've learned how to do it. Ne, obvladam. Sem se tudi navadila. Okay. You'll find it very relaxing. Relaxing. Yeah. Right. Torej, to je, te kroglice so zelo sproščujoče, kot tako lahko malo pomečkaš. So, zelo lepo, mislim, dobro občutek je. So, yeah, what we need you is to pour those bouncy balls onto this... In vas bomo prosli, da te kroglice lepo zlijete na naše asistentke tukaj, na te račke. There are some... Yeah, we, we just uh, forgot to introduce them. There are our smaller colleagues, there's ducklings, rubber Sam ducklings. Ich pozabla predstavi, to so naše kolegice iz našega laboratorija, najmanjše yeah, yeah, kolegice, more, more. <coughs> naše asistentke. This one doesn't want to stay in, but... Ta noče ostati tam. Can you see them clearly? A zdaj jasno vidimo te račke. The ducklings. Eh? The ducklings has disappeared. Nekako da bi zginile na pol. It's enough, thank you very much. Hvala. Now, we'll keep you on stage for a little bit longer, if you won't mind. Od spodej neki se vidi, ja, dobro, ampak strani. So you can see something yellow, something green, something orange. Vidimo neki, neki zelenega, neki rumenega, neki oranžnega, vidimo, ampak... Ne vemo pa, da so račke. Ne vemo pa, da so račke, ne? But, for example, if you didn't know that those were ducklings beforehand, I don't think you'll be able to tell me what actually is in me. Those colors smo že prej, represent. Smo že prej videli, da so to račke, zato vemo, da so račke, ampak zdaj, če bi nam kdo to tako pokazal, ne bi mogli ugant. So now, before we do something with this bucket to make those ducklings appear, the explanation between this is because the refractive index of those balls and between those balls and water is absolutely the same. In zakaj ne moramo videti tračk, pred da njih rešimo, da jih lahko vidimo, naj razložim. Ta lomni koeficijent, kako se lomi svetloba, skozi vodo je vedno enak. But here, when the light travels through this bucket, there is those balls which have the refracting index of water and also a lot of air between those balls. That's why when the light goes in, it just bounces all the way around so we cannot see what's inside of there. In ker svetloba gre skozi te kroglice, ki so iz vode, bi lahko potovala naravnost, normalno. Ampak vmes je veliko zraku in tam pa svetloba potuje drugače. Ko stopi v to vedro, se zmede. Malo se odbija levo desno in mi ne vidimo jasno. But what we could do to see those ducklings? Did you have a question? No. No. All right. I'm waiting. What are you going to do? So now, I'll present you with this jug of water. Naredimo, da zagledamo račke. 
And what we're doing now is just getting rid of all the air between the holes with the water. So yeah, we can either get rid of water or get rid of air. Or get rid of air. So now, so now, in kaj se je zgodilo? You can see the duck now. se račke vidijo, ja. Right? Yes. So, Let's now pour. they're visible. And actually, if we pour a little bit more water. In zdaj, če dodamo še malo več vode. Just a little bit. Malo okay. več. There you go. Okay. We can also save them from Tako under those bowls. Račke tudi mm -hmm. rešimo. In evo jih. Yes, they will do what they were made to do. Naredijo to, kar račke morajo narediti. Plavat na vodi. The ducklings are saved and so is our day. Račke smo rešili, rešili smo eksperiment, super. But huge thank you to Renata. She, Hvala. Thank you very much. This is not the last time you see her on the stage, so applause this time. Veliko pauz. Here comes the red bucket. Predaj je na vrsti rdeče vedro. We will have a few experiments with this bucket, actually. Kar nekaj eksperimentov bomo s tem vedrom naredili. It's a very good bucket. Yes, zelo dobro vedro. I like it, yes. And in this bucket, there is a jar, actually. Imamo kozarec za vlaganje. Yeah, here it is. Just, just the usual one. Da ga vidite. So, what I will try to do... Oh, all right, I will, I will show you. Uh, so, da vam pokažem. Torej. If there is water in a jar, and the lid is not closed, the water goes off the jar. Če kozarec ni zaprt, ne, se voda so, izkolo te zlije. So, what I will try to do is to turn the jar upside down. Sedaj bom skušala obrniti ta kozarec, ne, na glavo. Somehow that to keep the water inside. In skušala nekaj narediti, da voda ostane v kozarcu. So. It requires some concentration. Zato je potrebna res koncentracija. And the very right speed I have to make, to do it very slowly. Moram najti pravo hitrost zelo počasi. So, here it comes, here it comes. Si. Ah! Ah! Didn't work. Ni, ni. All right. Spelo. All right, maybe you tried. Ne vem, poskusi tem. You know, to, for example, understand that there is gravitation on every planet, there was loads of different experiments. For example, the Cavendish experiment that Uller did somewhere in Estonia some time ago. But uh, there were loads of different experiments, definitely not one. In they, za to, da dokažemo, da obstaja gravitacija, je bilo narejenih Ogromno eksperimentov, tudi v Estoniji smo na vnojem predkratkim poskusili še enkrat taj eksperiment, Cavendishov eksperiment. Zagotovo več kot eden, ne? Hej, so maybe let me try this time? Ne, zdaj, jaz poskusim. So, so the experiment should never be done just once, we should try them multiple times. Let's try it again. Mi, ko znanstveniki, nikoli ne odnehamo, ne? Če eksperiment ne uspe, ga ponovimo še enkrat, pa večkrat. Oh, isn't it too much? Ni malo preveč vode? Ok, let's try it. Dajmo poskusit. You never know. Nikoli ne veš, dokle ne probaš. Ok, let us do it really slowly. Dajmo res zelo počasi. Počasi. Wow. Yeah! Wow. I'm really scared right now. This it is. Že bojim. But I think it works. Bak mislim da deluje. Eden zlijamo van. Okay, maybe some of you might have might have guessed the trick behind that. Sej, verjetno poznate v čem je trik, ne? And the trick is trik je v tem simple. Zelo preprost. There were two jars. Imamo dva kozarca. So one of the jar has nothing on top, and the other one has this little net over it. Na enem nismo imeli ničesa, na drugem pa mrežico. And obviously this jar did not work, as there is too big of a space here to, for the water to stay in. In preprosto prvi eksperiment je deloval, ker je odprtina prevelika. 
But in this case, this net actually tried to hold the water in because the holes that are in the net are too small for the water to get out of. In preprosot mnežica, če pravi odprta, ima tako majhna je ta očesca, da vendar le voda, če le pravilno počasi odpremo, ne steče. And due to the physical property known as surface tension, the water actually stays in the jar along with the story about the doors. In fizikalna lasnost vode, zaradi katere ne steče ven, je površinska napetost. K temu spada zgodbica o tem, kako to deluje. Če bi imeli tukaj na steni veliko odprtino in bi vsi skušali iti ven, bi nam uspelo. Če na isti steni naredimo ogromno majhnih odprtinc, ki pa so manjše od nas, ne moramo iti ven. In tako je voda kljub odprtinam, očez samo mrežci, ostala v kozarcu in iztekla ven. So, for now, we have this red bucket still on stage, so let's continue doing experiment with this, but we have also the white bucket right here. Ker imamo rdeče vedro na mizi, bomo nadaljevali eksperimente s tem, imamo pa še eno novo tako posodo, to sivo. In? Yeah, actually, the surface tension, the one that we were talking about right now, is the reason that we can make the soap bubbles also. In površinska napetost, ta fizikalna lasnost vode nam omogoča, da delamo milne mehurčke. Si ste že pihali milne mehurčke, ne? Let's try it. Da bom dej poskusil, da jaz. All right, it broke. Je počel. So the soap bubbles can be made from different gases, and the one gas that we will use is propane, which can be found, for example, in gas stoves at home. Po navadi napihujemo milne mehurčke z navadnim zrakom, ker pihamo. Mi jih bomo napihnili s propanom. To je plin, ki ga imamo doma v štedilniku. Kuhamo z njim. But the propane and what we're trying to do with it, and we're trying to burn it down, in this is not a good idea to burn it here, because this thing may actually melt. Propan je pa zelo unetljiv plin, zato z njim kuhamo. In mi ga bomo tudi zažgali. Samo zdaj, v tej posodi mislim, da ne bi bilo najbolje, ker se nam bo stopila po cirkost, ne? So the safer option, sounds funny after you understand what it is, but actually the safer option is to take the bubbles right here, hold them and burn them on our hands. In ker nam je žal posode, bomo te mehurčke vzeli v roke in jih prižgali v rokah. So, one of us will get burned today. Tako da danes je eden izmed naju dveh žrtov. And we do not want to put the pressure on you, but we will do exactly that. So you will be this. You will decide which one of us will get burned today. In the scene, be we chutli pod pritiskom, ampak se boste, ker bom vam ozdej ukazali, da vglasujete, kdo naj drži ogen, kdo naj se opeče zdej. So please raise your hands. Tore dvignite roke. If you want him to burn. Če hočete da njega spečemo. Hmm. Keep it down. Keep it down. Hold, hold, hold. So, all right. Okay, now vote, please raise your hands, those who want to see Alona burn. Roke, tisti, ki ste za Aljono. Oh, what's wrong with me today? Mislim, kaj je z mano danes narobe? Danes vsi mene nekako izbirate. Kaj je zdaj? All right. Okay, happy days, happy days for me. Jaz pa imam srečo. So, well, we need to make... This is decided who will be burned. I'm very happy with this decision, so I will even... Go ahead and make the bubbles myself. Ona bo, ona bo gorela in sem zelo zadovoljen, da nisem jaz. Med tem bom jaz naredil mehurčke. And I will try to protect myself as much as possible. Jaz sem bom pa skušala, kolikor se le da zaščitit. So now the question is, how can Alona actually protect herself? In vprašanje je, kako se lahko Alona dejansko zaščiti? What would be the best way? Kaj menite, kaj mora narediti, da bo? Oh. The obvious answer is not to do that, of course. Mislim, najbolje se zaščitim tako, da grem stran in sploh tega ne počnem. To je jasno. That would be the smartest one. Ta bi bila najpametnejša, ne? Ampak ok, če sem že tukaj, ti namočim roke. Ja, tako smo slišali. To wet your hands. So, I, yes, I will rinse my hands, I will soak them with water. Ja, dobro si bom namočila roke. So... Here it is. They are very wet right now. Zdaj so že dovolj hlažne, res mokre. Yes. And... In dejmo. All right, here it comes. 
Ta-da! Uh-huh. So it's strange for me to see this reaction. Alona didn't scream. She didn't even... Yes. She wasn't even looking scared. Zanimiva reaction. Actually, the hands are totally okay. A little bit soapy. Alona didn't cry, didn't frustrate her. The rocks were just in order. So yeah, all uh, the water took all the heat Zakaj? from the fire. Zato ker je voda posrkala vso toploto od ognja. And physically, yes, I physically know, it's called the heat capacity. So if the water, the hands are covered in water and the fire appears, the water just takes all the fire inside of it, it gets a little bit warmer, but ultimately the fire extinguishes and the hands are safe. In fizikalna lasnost vode, ki to omogoča, je toplotna kapaciteta. To pomeni, da voda posrka vso toploto, sama voda postane toplejša, ampak zaščiti roke pred ognjem. So, yeah, it was very easy, actually, to put on certain fires, something that is highly flammable and you have, like, burning matches, yeah, it's not a big deal. Mislim, se je nekaj preprostega, ne? Nekaj prižgemo zužigalco. Kaj pa je v tem posebnega, no? But there are ways to put something on fire without matches. Ampak lahko ogen zanetimo tudi brez zužigalic. And for the next experiment, we'll try to ignite something by using water, as this is the water theater show. V naslednjem eksperimentu, ker je celotna predstava o vodi, bomo skušali zanetiti ogen z vodo. And the next experiment is already here in front of you. In eksperiment je že tukaj pred vami. So in this little aluminum foil cup, there are two ammonium salts mixed together. In v tej aluminijesti posodici imamo zmešani dve amonijevi soli. And for now, this mixture is safe. It's not dangerous, it would not ignite, it would not explode, nothing will happen with it. In zaenkrat je ta mešanica se še stabilna, ni nevarna. Ne bo eksplodirala, ne bo se unela, nič se ne bo zgodilo. Yes, boom, no, nothing. Ne, nothing happens. But now it's very stable. It will become, in fact, unstable after we add the third chemical, which is the powder of a metal called zinc. Če pa dodamo tretjo snov, in to je element zinc v prahu, postane celotna mešanica res nestabilna, nevarna. So let us add a spoonful of the zinc powder to it. In damo eno žličko cinka, ampak. And always safety should be first, so ker, I would rather put on this thermoglove on as well. Ker vemo, da je varnost na prvem mestu, se bom zaščitil seveda. So let's add the zinc. Dodajmo cink in poglejmo. And obviously the name of the theater show is not the zinc theater. That's why after adding zinc, nothing happened. In ker današnja predstava ni o cinku, Vidite, smo dodali cink, pa se nič ni zgodilo. But our theater show is purely about water. Naša predstava je o vodi. And the name of this experiment is not igniting with zink, it's igniting with water. In tudi ime eksperimenta ni prižgemo cink, unamemo cink, ampak prižgemo vodo ali z vodo v tem primeru. So for now, let me get this spoon out of the radioactive zone. Žličko iz radioaktivnega območja. And igniting with water obviously requires water as well. So let me do exactly that. In če hočemo zanetiti ogen z vodo, potrebujemo vodo in tukaj je še voda. Now that was impressive. No, to je bilo nekaj, a ne? You saw the flames. Plamene ste videli. I know that. Vem, da ste jih videli. You did saw the flames, but you didn't see any matches or any gas burned before it, so we were able to create this fire and loads of smoke. Ampak nismo imeli ne vžigalic, ne vžigalnika in vendarle smo zanetili ogen, ki je bil viden. Just by using a chemical reaction. Samo z uporabo kemične reakcije. And obviously water to catalyze the process or to make it go faster. In voda je tukaj bila katalizator, torej tisti element, ki pospeši reakcijo. No tricks this time, just the science. In spet tudi to lahko umaknemo. So from one chemical experiment to another. In če gremo zdaj z enega kemijskega eksperimenta na naslednjega, 
We've proved with the last experiment that we can actually put something on fire with water, but can we put regular water on fire somehow? Zdaj smo videli, da lahko nekaj zažgemo, prižgemo z vodo. Kaj pa vodo samo? A lahko samo vodo prižgemo? So for you to make sure that it's actually da water vidimo. inside of there, let's try and light it on fire. Da vidimo, če je to res voda, dajmo jo skušaj skušati zažgati. Okay. In so just extinguishes. Se ugasnilo. Nothing occurred this time. <laughs> Noč se ni zgodilo. Well, but at least we proved that it's just water with nothing else inside of it. Ampak vsaj vemo, da je to voda in da v tej vodi ni ničesar drugega. But not for long, because Ampak we can add something in it. Ne bo dolgo, ker lahko tej vodi nekaj dodamo. Of course we wouldn't uh, even care about the, all this uh, putting here the jar of water yeah if we couldn't do something something interesting with it. Je jasno da tudi ne bi dali tega kozarca z vodo gor, če ne bi mogli nekaj zanimivega narediti z tega. And here comes another chemical reaction. In zato je na vrsti naslednja kemična reakcija between the water and calcium carbide. Med vodo in kalcijevim karbidom. So during this reaction a lot of gas named acetylene is produced. In ko se začne ta reakcija je produkt reakcije plin acetilen. So I will just add those in to dodamo v vodo into water and you can actually in see it bubbling already. Je vidimo kako brbota. Right. So Means so no. that reaction is happening. To pomeni, da reakcija že poteka. So lots of gas is produced and it's currently somewhere here. In plin se nastaja plin, ki se zadržuje nekje tukaj. Hmm. So now let's try this one the second time. So first time did not work when we try to light the water with nothing in it. But now something is inside of water, so let's try this one more time. Prvič nam ni uspelo, nismo uspeli zažgati vode, pa dajmo zdaj drugo poskusiti. Ready? Pripravljeni? Steady. Go. <laughs> so this gas that was produced during this reaction was also quite flammable. We put it very easily in fire. In ta plin, ki je nastal, acetilen, je tudi zelo vnetljiv, kot ste videli, zelo lahko ga je vneti. But notice how we just added something into water and it obviously ignited. Good thing that it will not happen when you put sugar in your tea. Let's in, hope. Kot ste videli, dodamo nekaj v vodo in lahko prižgemo. Upamo, da se to ne zgodi, če date sladkor v vodo. Okay. Thankfully, po. nobody has calcium carbide in the kitchen. In na srečo, tudi v kuhnji ponavadi ne držimo kalcijevega karbida. A ne? So, let's talk about, we've talked about quite difficult parts of chemistry of water let's talk about the more easy one the easy Zdaj, govorili smo malo o težkih vidikih kemikalnih kemi, kemijskih lastnosti vode dajmo povedat nekaj lakše lajše lažjega preprostejšega so what is the chemical formula of water katera je formula vode dobro rekel h2o so it's yeah. absolutely correct it's h pa o h2o and h in this case stands for hydrogen in H, črka H pomeni vodik. And O in this case stands for oxygen. O pa označuje kisik. So those are two, two different gases which when reacted can produce water. In to sta dva plina, ki reko reagirata, ustvarita vodo, novo molekulo. So where can we find uh, oxygen? Zdaj, kje najdemo, če rabimo kaj kisika? Posod. All anyway. around us. Ja, yes, posod. In v zraku ga imamo, ne? And where can we find uh, hydrogen? Kje, kje pa najdemo vodik? It's a, yes, in the water. Ja, yes. v vodi, ja, seveda, tudi. Ampak You've learned your lesson very well. It's a bit harder, uh, harder je malo težko, element to discover. Je malo težko ga potegati ven z vode, ne? Even though it's the most popular element in the universe. In težko, težko najdemo vodik, čeprav je eden izmed najbolj prisotnih 
elemento o vesolio. So while we're preparing this experiment, there was an interesting story about hydrogen, In, which yes. we'll ask Renata to Mate, explain. Tem ko pripravljamo ta eksperiment, bo Renata da mora povedala nekaj zanimivega o vodiku. Ali poznate cepelin? Ste že kdaj vin? Ja. In en najbolj znan cepelin je Hindenburg, ki je leta 1937 poletel iz Nemčije v Združene države Amerike, kjer pa se je zgodila nesreča in je zagorel. In zakaj je zagorel? V cepelinih so želeli Nemci takrat uporabiti heli. Heli je nekako bolj varen plin, ampak američani imajo velike zaloge helija, pa jim ga niso želeli prodati. Najprej, ker so ga želeli zase, po druge strani pa tudi niso želeli nacistom prodati svojih naravnih zalog. In Nemci so rekli, pa kaj? In so dali v cepelin vodik. In zdaj bomo pravzaprav videli, zakaj se je zgodila tista velika slavna nesreča s cepelinom Hindenburg. So, yeah, the story of this cepelin is actually a very sad one. Je brez žalostna zgodba, ta, ki se je zgodila s tem cepelinom. So, here we have, well, two way smaller cepelins. Tukaj imamo malo bistveno manjša dva cepelina, recimo. There will definitely be no victims during this experiment. Except the balloons, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. We have Except enough of the balloons? Them. Yes, we have enough of them, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody counts the balloons. So, there is uh, one possibility to blow up the balloon. Zdaj obstaja več možnosti, kako lahko počimo balon. Kako, na primer? How is it possible? Iglo. Iglo. Needle. Yeah. So. Okay, we do not have a needle, but this edge Imamo. is quite sharp. Igle, ampak ta smenečica je dokaj ostra. So let's use the same Christmas tree we've used already in one Demo of the experiments. Isto, ki smo jo že uporabili v kakem eh, drugem eksperimentu. Yeah, so let's do it in three. Oh. Ha-ha! <laughs> mm -hmm. But, the well, but the tragedy of uh, Zeppelin Hindenburg ampak, didn't happen because of some sort of a needle. Nesreča s Zeppelinom Hindenburg se ni zgodila zaradi neke igle ali česa drugega ostrega. It happened because, uh, first of all, hydrogen got together with the oxygen. Zgodila se here. je zato, ker se je vodik v zraku pomešal s kisikom. And the other thing that happened was a flame. In drugi dejavnik, ki je to povzročil, je bil plamen. So for the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to start creating water, we need high temperature of around 6, of around 4, 150 degrees Celsius. In torej, da sprožimo to reakcijo med vodikom in kisikom in da nastane voda, potrebujemo še toploto, približno 450 stopin Celzija. So thankfully, the match is burning at around 600 degrees. Na srečo, vžigalica ima eno temperaturo približno okoli 600 stopin Celzija. So yeah, this reaction is actually very hot and loud. In ta reakcija bo zdaj zelo vroča in Hrupna. So, <laughs> if you're afraid of uh, loud noises, moti hrup, and especially those who sit in the front rows, obvezno pa ti, ki sedite tukaj v prvih vrstah, please cover your eyes or ears. Si ušesa. You can cover your eyes. Mislim, oči <laughs> tudi, če hočete, ampak ušesa predvsem. So, please. Cover your ears with your palms, In not fingers. Pravilno je ne s prsti, ampak like z dlanmi. Yes, it's way safer. Much to je veliko bolje kot s prsti. Mhm. Mm it? No. Pripravljeni? I'll do it like that. Okay. We have done this experiment a lot of times. Mi smo ta eksperiment že večkrat ponovili. This time none of us will do this experiment. Zdaj ga ne bo naredil nihče iz mednaju, ampak but we'll let Renata do this. Bomo Renati dali možnost, da to naredi. So, she has her headphones on. Ima svoje slušnike, že nameščene, da si začite v šesa. What do I do? So, so get the, uh, the flame Klip next to the balloon. Samo se dotakni yes. balona. Count. Let's count it out. Dajmo šte, tri. Ena, zdaj. Ok. 
you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so before we go, the water, as I said, should have formed during this reaction, but I don't think none of us got wet. Ampak pre da se poslivamo poglejmo. V tej reakciji sta kisik in vodik reagirala in se spremenila v vodo. In vendar nihče od nas ni mokr. So the explanation is very simple. The temperature inside of the reaction was very hot, so the water could not exist in a liquid state, so it instantly evaporated or turned into in its gas. In razlaga je zelo preprosta. Reakcija je bila tako vroča, da je novo nastala voda, takoj izhlapela plinasto stanje in nismo imeli v tekočem. So we saw water in its solid state, we saw water in its liquid state, in its gaseous state. So we've done all the experience regarding that. So I think lesson can be finished. Thank you students. In videli smo torej vodo v trdnem, v tekočem, v plinastem stanju. S tem mislim, da lahko zaključimo to predstavo in hvala za pozornost. Hvala. Najlepša hvala.